Welcome back to Inside FNM Wrestling, the first edition of the new year. I'm Jack Keffer, joined alongside head wrestling coach Mike Rogers and junior captain Patty Quinlan. Guys, it's been a busy 2017 year so far. Uh, we'll start at the beginning. Uh, could you guys talk about the Midlands and the success uh, that your four wrestlers had there? Anthony Mancini with a great match against Miles Martin, one of the better wrestlers in the country. Coach, could you just kind of comment on those four wrestlers and their uh, experience. Yeah, um, the Midlands is obviously one of the toughest tournaments out there. It's kind of like a pre-national. It kind of gives you a, a glimpse inside the NCAA tournament. Um, and, you know, all our guys went out there and battled, wrestled some uh, great competition. Um, as you mentioned, Mancini had a great competition against number, I think, two or three seed, uh, Martin, right off the bat. And, um, and, again, it was a good test for him to kind of see, you know, that could be your draw at the NCAA tournament or the conference. You're drawing the number one, two, three, four seed. How do you handle that? And he went out there and just uh, stuck with the game plan and push the pace and push the pace and he was behind and he, he, he chipped away and came back and, and wore him out and you know went up going in overtime and he was the aggressor actually and went after the first takedown got a stalemate uh didn't end up winning obviously uh but uh it got everyone there excited um and that's kind of th something we, we preach about all the time you know at, at the ncaa tournament the conference tournament uh there's two guarantees the guys who are supposed to win are going to win and guys are supposed to win lose you know there's always upsets so um don't don't uh, wrestle the singlet wrestle the guy and, and that was a good kind of example for him to kind of experience that and the good thing when he was done he was not happy he wasn't happy that he almost beat some you know a, a really good kid he was upset that he could have done a little bit more some good results at the midlands and also some good results at the david layman uh fnm open patty could you talk about um kind of what the fnm open was like how the experience was and your success that day um well, the fnm open was, it was cool to have it back at our school because last year we had it at the marriott downtown um it was back to like big numbers. I think there's 350 total, which was nice. Um, and you know, I knew going to the day I was gonna have some tough, tough matches. And uh, for my freshman year, when it was at the same number, I wrestled seven matches, and I think I wrestled about the same uh, this week and wrestled some good kids. Uh, and I was okay with my finish. I knew I, I thought I could have finished higher. Uh, a couple of other guys who uh, wrestled well at the Open, uh, Paluzzi. Um, I know at the Midlands did well, and at the Open, uh, could you talk about kind of the other performers at the uh, FNM Open this year? Yeah, I think our overall our team did well. Um, you know, we, you know, some of the guys that even in place that went, you know, two, three, four rounds deep. Um, and our our Open's becoming a very challenging, very competitive uh competition like like we said we had i think the final number was 348 so about three 350 wrestlers that means you're wrestling a match probably every 45 minutes to an hour if you're still battling through and it, it it's tough and the quality competition with teams like virginia tech and princeton and so on each match had national each weight class had nationally ranked guys um at each competition so you know um Antonio did a great job. He keeps plugging away. His red shirt year is just really for him to try to grow and try to expand his offense. Uh, we want to get away from just being dependent on one one particular technique. For him, it's a foot sweep. He's really, that's a really good technique for him. But your red shirt year, you want to kind of expand that a little bit more. So each tournament, he's trying to grow um, and open up his offense a little bit more, which is allowing him. It may open up him to some mistakes too, and he may take some losses that otherwise, if he were a little bit more conservative, maybe he wins. But and again, it's his red shirt year. It doesn't really matter that much and more as uh, learning, you know, getting that next level. And, um, you know, all those guys. It was exciting to see uh, Rick Dursa was actually there. Um, you know, he, he, he went from 141 to 165 and took third. <laughs> Quick turnaround after senior year. Yeah. And, uh, so, I mean, it was it was great to see him compete. Rick was just, a, he's always a competitor. And it, it, he was wrestling purely for fun and go out there. And, and But he still, he still likes to compete. Took third at a really tough weight class at 165. Um, so it was fun for our guys to kind of see, you know, uh, alumni coming back and competing in their own tournament. A uh, lot of work had to go into working the tournament as well. Patty, did you guys have to help out getting the mats set up and other uh, other work? Yeah, I believe on we set it up on Wednesday. We got all the the tables down and then there it had to be um, like the carpet on the new floor. So we had to set that all up. But then coaches did a good job of kind of leaving us the day two days before kind of just us not worrying about it and having them take care of it and the guys that are injured do it, which is nice. And uh, I mean, after the tournament, we worked a, uh, there was a little kid wrestling tournament after that we worked 
and we set up and cleaned up pretty quickly after that. As the FNM Open keeps growing, a lot of events uh, to the outside of it. Could you kind of talk about those events? Yeah, the one thing we added this year was the WIBN, which is the Wrestlers and Business Networking chapter here um, in Lancaster. Uh, we, we joined with them. Uh, our main point person was Dan Burkholter that helped organize it. But what, what we try to do is try to we're trying to build in um, more than just a wrestling event. So the night before, we invited all the juniors and seniors that were comp competing in the FNM Open to come to this um, social slash uh, networking opportunity where they can interact with uh, local business people. We had, uh, I think, from Maryland all the way to Philly. And we had about 20, 25 uh, businessmen and women there to help interact with um, with these um, student athletes. So we had we had uh, mainly three teams that participated this year. It was F and M. It was uh, Brown was there. They set set a, a good number. Lock Haven and uh, Maryland. Um, there might have been one or two others in there, but that was the main main. Um, um, student athlete body that was there and they got to really interact with some really good business people ask some questions I interact about um, interviewing skills resume stuff and patty was actually participating one of the participants on, on our side of things yeah patty what did you think uh, how was the event um i thought it was pretty awesome uh Dan Burkholder, who set it up, he actually did a really good job. He, it was kind of cool. He set it up like a wrestling practice. So there was different time segments we had to meet with people. And we were in basically groups of like 10 wrestlers. There's four tables. Um, and we just run around and to each table. And we got a chance to like talk to these, these businessmen and women about like what their business is, uh, like what they do, like where they're from, how they got where they were. And then it gave us a chance to like ask them questions. So I so we asked questions about like resumes, like what they want to see, um, what internships they offer, and like when I should like apply for those internships, and like what like prior work experience would help me, or like what I like stuff in school that would help me as well. Moving on into uh, EI uh, WA matchups, uh, first wrestle off the season with Bucknell, really tough team, but you guys had some close matches in there and some good wins, and then moving to the pit duels, a big win against Davidson. Uh, a yeah, 39 to 10 win. Yeah, um, we knew that was going to be a tough week for us because we had that the F and M Open on the on Saturday, which you know Patty alluded to. It's a lot of work that goes into it. My assistant coaches do a great job of organizing. Everyone, you know, carries the load and 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 kind of shares the responsibility. But you know, a lot of it falls on these guys loading the mats up, take the mats down, all that kind of stuff. So we had to do that on a Friday, Saturday clean up, and then turn around on a Tuesday, drive the buck now and wrestle, and then uh, a couple days later get on the bus on Friday. Friday and go go to Pitt and wrestle out in Pitt and wrestle Pitt, Binghamton and Davison. So I we knew it was going to be a tough training week in, in terms of getting through. And um, you know we're we're getting kind of dinged up with some injuries, so we weren't at full throttle against Buck now. But I think our guys that went out there that did compete did a heck of a job. Um, you know, 25 Edgar was right there. You know, last second you know situation changes that match, and then you know going up through the guys who won did a great job of solidifying the matches and and trying to. Um, you know, expand their 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 wrestling um, skill set, and the guys that lost went out there and fought and, and competed, and that's what we're hoping for. Um, you know, but again, going out to uh, Pitt, we we knew Pitt. Obviously, we wrestled Pitt. That was going to be a tough one. Binghamton's a, a conference duel, and then then ending with Davison and uh, Pitt was rough. We you know we competed in some of those weight classes, but again, we're we're getting you know two three deep into our weight classes, uh, which you can look at that two ways. It could be a negative. Um, I see it as a positive. That's an opportunity for someone else to step in there. It may not get that experience otherwise. So, but it's a learning curve, you know. And um, you know Pitt, we were kind of the. The, the nail and against Davison were the hammer, you know, so it was good to see them respond. You know, you kind of take your licks and you take your beating, but then you turn around and you, you give it out too. So it was good to see how our guys responded, you know, at the end of the day, they could have very easily, you know, you know, felt sorry for themselves and, you know, and, and just not competed, but they, they turned it around and were a little bit upset with their first performance and even their second performance with some of them. And they went out there and, and put it on Davison and finished the day um, with the win and traveling back home. Patty, you certainly dished it out this weekend at the Pit Duels. Nine pins overall in your season and a big pin uh, against Davidson. Can you talk, kind of talk about the secret to your success when you're in the match and you know, you're wrestling the guy, heat of the moment. Uh, how are you getting them on your on the back so easily? I mean, what's what's going into all these falls? Um, the matches that I do get kids on their back, it's me not going out there to pin a kid. It's me going out there and just wrestling. And I get them to do bad te technique, and they react the way I want them to react. That's how I get them to their back. So in the matches that I go out there and I'm like, oh, I want to pin this kid, I tend to put myself in bad situations. So uh, 
basically just going out there and wrestling. And I knew the like as the match went on, I could feel the kid kind of being uncomfortable in situations and not really wanting to tie up with me. And he ended up like taking a, not an excellent shot, and I just put him to his back. And it was just just like something I've been working on the last this past summer that I just, you know, finishing those moves when I had the chance. Guys, big weekend coming up, the New England road trip at Harvard, at Brown, and then at Sacred Heart. And that's not all in one location. Those are all three separate locations. Can you kind of talk about the travel uh, this weekend and then uh, combined with the grueling work ethic and, you know, the matches that you guys have to face both Saturday and Sunday? Yeah, it's not ideal, but sometimes you have to, you know, make the best out of, a, you know, out of the situation and trying to connect those teams uh harvard and brown and sacred heart are kind of in the same geographical location so we're going to wrestle um harvard in the morning um or in the afternoon and then brown later in the evening in the same day in which so we'll wrestle that when we jump on the bus we'll have food already ordered to the bus we'll eat on the way there um, get off the bus warm up and then wrestle brown and then we'll get on the bus go to a hotel get close to sacred heart and get up and wrestle sacred heart and then travel back um it, wrestling is just a very very tough sport it, it, you know you have to be tough both physically and mentally to deal with the you know the travel on and off but the training we've done so far the amount of tournaments and competitions we've done wrestling multiple days in different locations these guys are immune to it you know they should be able to adjust it, again it's not ideal but it's the way our schedule worked and how we can get it together to make it as feasible and also as comfortable as possible not making that trip three separate times patty not much of a weekend for you there what's it like with the quick turnaround and school just uh starting underway with the spring semester um well luckily it's just it's like basically syllabus week so i know i'm not gonna have that much work hopefully um but uh, it's, it's a good test, too, because the uh, two-day weigh-ins, that's a good test for UIWAs and Nationals, you know, getting used to that. Um, and you got to be, like, be prepared and just adjust to, like, the elements. So, like, I mean, not really elements, like, weather and stuff, but, like, elements with, you know, you're traveling. So you have to have short memory. Win or lose in the first duel, you got to come back and be ready to wrestle. And I'm really looking forward to the Harvard duel. Um, I lost that kid earlier in the year, so I'm excited to wrestle him now. And guys, it started the spring semester here, but let's talk a little bit about last fall. You guys had a, a lot of guys on the Dean's list, seven total, I believe. Coach, that's great. Uh, can you talk about kind of what the character and the expectation is uh, for your wrestlers? And Patty, can you talk about kind of balancing both the wrestling and the, uh, and the academics? Yeah, academically, we got seven guys on a dean's list now. Seven, three of them were freshmen, you know, which is pretty impressive. Uh, and it kind of shows you that, you know, the way we, we design our training, the way we do our practices, we give them, you know, Wednesdays off as academic day. And then we do these tough travel things. We try to do it over our, our break. I think last year, guys missed one day of class total with, you know, the whole season. So we really try to not um, avoid them missing any academics. Um, it's not going to be easy, but uh, if it was easy, everyone would do it. So academically, these guys do a great job. We try to keep it in balance. We take as much time as we need um, for wrestling and because and, we know you know, when they're done with practice, they're going and hitting the books. They're not going out and playing Xbox and, you know, just watch, getting caught up on, you know, some show. They're they're hit, they're writing papers or they're, they're hitting, the, um, getting caught up on the reading. So it's a lot that goes in. And these guys, you see them on the road. They have books with them. They're, you know, in the tournaments, they're studying. It, you know, you make it work. Yeah, Patty, how does that feel kind of as the captain of the wrestling squad? You guys are getting it done both on and off the mat. Um, I, I think it's awesome, especially for the freshmen. They're really, like, it, it, they understand the toughness of the school and the toughness of the wrestling, which is awesome to see. Because um, like, so, like with me, like I didn't, it was a difficult transition from high school to college and with work, workload with school and stuff. But um, now that I understand, I think it's the upperclassmen are being role models to these younger kids and helping them like, oh, like if you have a paper, like don't waste the last minute, you know, like do a little bit now. Do like if you have an hour in between practice and classes, like do something there. Um, and I think kids are really like taking that and actually using it, which is awesome. Thanks for joining us here on Inside FNM Wrestling and tune in for future episodes here at Franklin and Marshall Campus.